I, I can't tell you how amazing it is to see people really just connect at these pizza parties. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening whenever you may be listening. This is Latitude, the 43 North podcast. I'm your host. Welcome to 2018, The Nate Benson. How are you, Sean? I'm here am... with Sean Heidinger. Oh, I'm quite well today. Thank you for asking, Nate. Sounds great. You sound enthusiastic about 2018. <laughs> <laughs> sound thrilled about 2018. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't be more thrilled. You know, uh, new beginnings, ending certain things. Yeah, uh, but a fresh start is always great. Do you have an announcement to make? Is this something I don't know about yet? Uh, well, actually, about five minutes ago, I received word that my girlfriend and I are going to be adopting another dog. Hey, look at that. Congratulations. Yeah, and it's an interesting situation because the dog is coming from um, a family who's, uh, who, who both of his own or her owners have died recently. Okay. So the dog is actually quite old, and okay. we will be seeing it out. Got it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I see what I, I uh, So it's exciting, and we have a young dog so uh, okay. at, at the moment, and uh, you know, both ends of the spectrum will be yeah. in the household now. So we're getting right into it, uh, and uh, talking to Sean this week about Dig, Top Coder, life here on BNMC. Uh, but for those of you who don't know you, Sean, and you, you know, as I was joking before this, you know, you and I are the faces of this startup scene. Who doesn't know us? I mean, let's let's be honest. But we're also either. two of the. Uh, most uncool people in Buffalo. Oh, I agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> no. Uh, for those who don't know you, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, so my name is Sean Heidinger. I'm um, I'm uh, less than 30 years old. <laughs> less than <laughs> or greater than? Not or greater to? than okay. or equal to. Um, less than 30. But I, uh, I have a unique background. Um, you know, uh, worked in a lot of cool and fun places. I've traveled quite a bit. Um and I have since landed here at the Buffalo Niagara Medical Campus in uh, in in the business development program, which is a, a very much so evolving program um, here at the campus as we shift our attention and our efforts uh, from uh, traditional business development to uh, developing our commitment to tech mm -hmm. uh, and our and our commitment to tech and growing tech uh, here in Buffalo. So that is a very vague mm -hmm. way to put it. But right now. Um, you know, our efforts with Top Coder and, uh, you know, all the traveling we've been doing, our, our focus is to build out new space and build out new programming uh, and attract new people and companies to Buffalo that have a uh, also, a, you know, an aligning com commitment to tech, but also a, um, a passion for technology. So uh, however you may apply that or, or however you apply technology to your business, to grow your business, to grow your community and to grow uh, you know, the resources here on campus. Um, and that's kind of where our head's at right now. Uh, you know, before we jump into, you know, Dig and Top Guard and the things you guys have been doing, where do you rank on the list of Heidinger children? Oh, um, well, there are only two. Yeah. And out of this the This is two a loaded question <laughs> that was fed to me, by the way, by somebody yes. related to you. Uh, I'm going to go right ahead and say that I'm number two yeah. of two. Yeah. Uh, simply because... Simply because I took the road less traveled by. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, Colleen, uh, Colleen is a, had a very traditional, um, you know, yeah. education. Yep. Uh, kind the, of. The uh, firstborns, you know, me being a firstborn, we always take the, the straight and narrow path. Yeah, and yeah. And I chose, I chose to not you do that. You younger brothers. <laughs> my brother's the same way. Just, he's, he's a, you know, a techie for bands out in L.A. And just like, what's he doing? Yeah. Um, but, you know. It's a it's a constant struggle. <laughs> For those uh, who don't know, Colleen uh, Heidinger, uh, director of events and programming at Forty Three North, is obviously your sister. So I'm just busting some chops, obviously. But uh, no, Colleen's great. You're great. You, you both are very dedicated to the the scene here. And where do you guys kind of credit your dedication to Buffalo? Because you both kind of you you bleed, you know, Buffalo. Yeah, I think um, I think it all starts with the neighborhood we we were brought up in. Um, we grew up in a neighborhood called the Old First Ward, and that is about as downtown yep. as you can get. The original downtown. Yeah, and uh, tons of history, um, and our, our family was deeply rooted in that neighborhood, not only, um, you know, with their family being, have traveled, uh, or I'm sorry, emigrated there, but also just how involved 
the my parents and, and their brothers and sisters were in the community. Um, it, it just truly had an impact on how much you and, my, and myself growing up learned to um, appreciate where you're from and, and, and commit to giving back to that. So you mentioned, uh, you know, kind of the Colleen took the straight path and you kind of took the winding road. What lead us up to the journey of how you ended up here at BNMC? What, uh, you know, what were you doing prior to this? What, and what made you interested in working here at BNMC? Yeah. So, um, it's a really good question. I, you know, you mentioned your brother in LA working as a tech. Uh, I actually did something similar. So right out of high school, I did go to college for one year. Um, but it, just it it's not that it didn't work out it just wasn't for me it's not for everybody yeah and um and i was uh i was i was forecasting uh myself as a business student so i've always kind of had an interest in entrepreneurship and sure. in fact in in high school i um i partnered with new era cap which is another big time local small buffalo company, company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 um and we worked together to put out kind of you know like a like a fashion line of of new era hats which okay. was at the time it was really cool to do yeah and it was really great and you know um you know we got a lot of local notoriety and uh, a whole bunch of celebrities were wearing our stuff uh and it was really cool to build a brand and that's kind of what i fell in love with was building a brand local celebrities or legit celebrities uh was legit celebrities okay. um so i'll i'll get to that but um <laughs> so i started a brand um in high school and then after high school uh actually some very good friends of mine uh were in a band in buffalo that got really big really fast um, and, uh, they've since broken up, but, um, they asked me to become, uh, their tour manager. Sure. And I couldn't decline that. It was an opportunity of a lifetime. The pay was great. I didn't want to go to school anymore. Yeah. I got to travel. Gig life is fun. It was a, it was a really nice, like yeah. living on a bus. It wasn't oh, yeah. like a terrible van tour. Uh, and I've done those two, but I ended up touring for about four and a half years. Yeah. And, and, and that's a grind. Yeah, and it was. And, you know, at the time, you get sick of living on a bus. You get sick of not being able to get the dog that you want. It gets old quick. It gets old quick. and Because, um, you, you know, it's not it's not like you see on, you know, rock documentaries. You're not the Rolling Stones. So you're not, like, you know, enjoying the cities you're in. You're waking up in a parking lot, playing a show, and leaving and waking up in a parking lot. Exactly. It's a – you sleep – you travel overnight. Yeah. And my job was to manage uh, – so I was a tour manager, and my job was to act as the threshold between – the management company, the record label, the agent, the um, promoters, the, the promoters, the venues, the, you name it, and it's a you're bit. The, you're the catch-all. Yeah, and uh, and at the same time, while well, at the same time, um, I was lucky enough to have artists that I was working with that were reliable. Mm -hmm. You know, so that made my my job a lot easier. But you know, it started with a band from Buffalo, and then they, you know, they kind of. Uh, dispersed, if you will, mm -hmm. and I took it upon myself to keep going. Yeah. So I had to, I had to, uh, you know, kind of depend on my contacts in the music industry, and ended up working with some really great people. Um, I worked for Cash Money Records. I worked for Gavin DeGraw. I worked for a um, uh, number of people that are doing really well now, mm -hmm. um, and it was cool to see that. But at the same time, it was a phase. Yeah. And it was time to come back to Buffalo. Yep. At, at that point, I just said, okay, I've seen enough. I've been to every square inch of this <laughs> country. Um, Even Idaho. Oh, I've been there. <laughs> Boise. Uh, but anyways, uh, you get back to Buffalo, and you're like, wow, shit. Or, or excuse me, I really, uh, I really miss this. Mm -hmm. And at the time, you know, you get back, and everybody's talking. Everybody's – Buffalo is a term that's, o that's overused, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, and everybody's starting to get on the train to support this, this vehicle that is our city that's somehow making a comeback. Yeah. And most recently we've seen the most, you know, tangible parts of this comeback, but um Bills being one of them. <laughs> uh but you know, when you get back to town, you got to figure out Oh, so I've been working in the music industry like what am I going to do, do now? Do? There's no so, music um, industry here. So I was out having cocktails with a friend and he introduced me to a woman that worked at Art Voice. Okay. And uh, they needed help with, you know, advertising and writing about music, and it was perfect. Mm -hmm. So I ended up working at Art Voice for about a year, which was great. Um, and then, you know, the entrepreneurial spirit of uh, not only myself, but a couple other people that worked at Art Voice, um, we wanted to start our own, our own thing because sure. there were some things about Art Voice that we didn't like. Mm -hmm. And we did it. We, uh, we all, it was a mass ex exodus from Art Voice, <laughs> and within uh, f about a month, we had the public. 
on the streets. And it is a brand new, it is Buffalo's one-stop shop yeah. for what you need to know about what's going on in Buffalo that week. We printed about 30,000 the first week. And it was really cool to get involved because it was like, um, it was a community effort. Yeah. And it was not only myself and five other people from Art Voice, but it was the storefronts in Buffalo that were supporting us. It yeah. was the advertisers that didn't know what we were going to what we were giving them, but they were willing to support our business, you know. Um, so starting the public, which is still printing to this day, uh, was was what really helped me to commit to entrepreneurship in Buffalo. And then at the same time, while I was delivering newspapers to the <laughs> Innovation Center, uh, I got to see this beautiful space here. Yeah. And I was just, I was relentless with my sister. How do I get a job at, at yeah. 43 North? How do I, you know, get involved with one of these startup companies? What do you need help with? How can I help with any event that you're doing? I just wanted to be here. When I came here to deliver newspapers, I didn't leave that day. <laughs> I spent all, all my time here um, in and out, just talking to people and getting to know the staff. Um, so one day she let me know that the, the BNMC uh, or the Buffalo Niagara Medical Campus was in, in need of a business development associate. Now, that is a position that, in, you know, it, it includes managing the dig space, the dig co-working space, mm -hmm. um, helping to find new tenants, just, uh, and, and just simply building business opportunities um, with the director of business development. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's a role that I really didn't know what I was getting myself into, but I threw my hat into the ring. And with uh, a lot of help and a lot of positive reinforcement, and, uh, you know, leaning on friends and, and, um, and, and hoping that people speak positively about you and your work ethic. Uh, I got the phone call and, and I was, you know, blessed with this opportunity. And here we are today. Now, my job is an <laughs> ever evolving week to week. Changes, yeah, it right? changes every day. Um, but it is it's a job that I love. Yeah. And I just wrapped up my my two year review. How'd it go? It it, it, went well. it went positive. Yeah, good. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> 2017 was a good year for uh, for Dig and BNMC. And it was. We um, you know, the the Dig as a co working space has never seen more members. Well, yeah. So let's talk. So Dig is 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 Buffalo's second co working space. There was co work Buffalo that's on Main Street now, and uh, Dig is the second kind of co working space that has sprouted up. And there's like, I think now a, a couple other ones on top of that. Correct. Yeah. So Dig is the second. Yeah. Um, Cowork Buffalo was the first co-working space in Buffalo. Um, DIG is a project of the business development program for the medical campus. So unlike startup, or I'm sorry, unlike Cowork Buffalo, mm -hmm. um, we have uh, a significant amount of resources that can help to support a business like DIG. You know, such as such as I mean. The giant that is the Buffalo Niagara Medical Campus, our, is our supporting institutions, our uh, the founding institutions on campus, and and a large staff of uh, we at the time we were about twenty two people. Now we're up to about thirty. Um, so, you know, when when I couldn't necessarily deliver exactly what you know somebody needed in Dig or, or an event in Dig needed, we I have people to rely on, and yeah. that's and that's really really great thing to have here uh, why is it staff. why is it important for an institution like bnmc to have a co-working space like like dig well the beauty of dig is that it's an entry point so a lot it's an entry point not only to uh people who are looking to get in touch with 43 north or z80 but it's also an entry point to the entire campus yeah so by just by being in dig um we and, and this is a great great segue mm -hmm. um but just it's by almo being almost like i know what i'm doing it's, it's a <laughs> Um, just by being in Dig, you you know you we you know my job is to make sure I know how your business is doing, what resource re, what resources you need. Yeah. You know maybe if you're hiring, can we help you find someone? Yeah. Do you need what do you need, and how can I help? That's yeah. why I'm there. Um, but uh, when we started to meet with everyone, when I came in, we you know uh, my CEO Matt Enstis and I. Uh, started meeting with everybody in the building, not even just dig, and just saying, "What do you like? What do you what do you not like? Yeah. Um, where where do you need help? How can we help you? And um, you know, what is the next step for your business?" We realized that everybody in dig seemed pretty content. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of our one of my favorite companies that's in dig is a is Zappos.com, mm -hmm. and 
the first thing they said was, I, well, I asked them, you know, why are you in Dig? And, and Matt was like, so what do you really like about Dig? And they were just like, well, it's a great environment, and we, we really love the coffee. <laughs> it's, a li- it's the little wow. things. Okay, yeah, it's the little things. So, um, but if you think about it, Zappos is a, you know, it's a, it's a company, it's a global company. Yeah. It's out of Las Vegas, and they, choose, they, they chose to move back from Las Vegas to work in Buffalo. Yeah. And grow their families here, and build a um, build a, a small you know part of Amazon or Zappos in Buffalo. Yeah. So that may really made us start thinking, you know, what what can we do to get see more of this? Yeah. What else is out there? So you know, we've updated the space. We've uh, we've listened to everybody. We met with every company in the building and just said, what can we do? Mm-hmm. How do we help you? And it's and it appeared as if it appeared as if most companies really just want the environment yeah you know and they just want to be to do they want to be able to do their own thing they want to be left alone but they also want opportunities to collaborate to collide um and to uh to network right yeah so learning about what the people in dig and in the innovation center want really took us down a road where we need to commit to building space where people want to be and uh, we have projects coming up and, and new spaces coming up uh, in the years to come that I think we're, are going to be um, pivotal to the growth of the technology industry in Buffalo. Because it's a little cramped up there now. I mean, you guys are... Yeah. So. You know, I, I remember, you know, in my previous life, came up to do some stories in Dig, and it was, you know, there's a few companies in there. That's cool. But yeah. It was a big room. And now there's, there's not much wiggle room left. We recently... Um, so, you, I mean, so, I mean, I, I think the listeners here know are, are pretty familiar with, uh, ACV auctions yep. and their explosive growth in the, in the recent, you know, months. But if you don't know about them, you head to the 43 <laughs> North Latitude archive and listen to the <laughs> ACV episode with Joe Neiman. Yeah. So, nice little uh, plug. Joe Neiman, um, really leading the charge on, uh, on a beautiful, uh, yeah. ex- unbelievable, uh, company and, and story here in Buffalo, um, but they are growing so quickly here in the building that they are taking over every inch, almost every room in the building. <laughs> so uh, we finally, we finally, um, we finally kind of gave up our, our event space and dig, yeah. and and for all the right reasons. Yeah. I love having them up there. It's adding. Uh, uh, so we moved, so we moved ACV in its almost its entirety up to dig, mm-hmm. and. It's a lively place. They kind of have their own space, yeah. but they sort of don't, uh, and they're spread out. And it's just bringing an element to not only the building, but to dig, um, to encourage the other companies that work in there every day yeah. to, you know, continue to grind it and out. This can be you in and this a couple can be years. You. I yeah, because they're only a less than a five-year-old company, four-year-old company at this point. And exactly. Look at almost two hundred employees. And the best part about having companies that are growing and dealing with mature company maturing company issues yeah. is the fact that joe is just hanging around yeah you know and um and his uh his fellow executives at acv are all around so if a you know if a company or a new dig member simply wanted to ask them something they i can. i don't discur- i don't i don't in, i don't tell them that they can't approach them yeah you know i actually encourage it yeah everyone everyone in both fourth and north, Z80 space, dig space. I mean, we all see each other. We're all pretty approachable. Yeah, which I is agree, nice. and and I think that's that's kind of one of the that's one of the foundational aspects of this space here is that everybody's just kind of approachable. Yeah, and everybody's willing to help. And I tell when a new dig member signs up, I say that it's an, kind of an un, unofficial agreement that you come in here willing to help, but you also are you come in here willing to search for help? Yeah, because I think all of it's us a give wanna, and take. You know, we want want everything to be better, and it's not going to get better unless you make it better yourself. And exactly, I, I think that's one way to look at it. Yeah, you know, the community, and that, that's a big word for me in Dig is community. Yeah. Uh, we do uh, anything from new member breakdowns to uh, pizza parties, whatever it takes for me to get people together to share. Yeah. of what they're working on. You're going to need a little bit more pizza, though, with ACV up there. <laughs> We're going to need a lot <laughs> more pizza. Pizza budget's going to hit, get hit hard this year. I, uh, I, I can't tell you how amazing it is to see people really just connect yeah. at these pizza parties. It's, so I get up. Obviously, I take the lead, mm-hmm. and I say, uh, okay, what we're going to do, here's what's coming up in DIG. Here are the events you need to be at or attend. 
Um, and here are some new people you need to know. And so they go around, they say, hey, what's up? You know, I'm uh, Joel. I run JMS Technology. Um, I'm sorry, I messed up the name of that company. Sorry, Joel. Um, <laughs> Joel, if you're listening, JMS please, Tech, can send to. And, um, and I, I do, uh, do kind of, I source tech jobs and I help people get, yeah. and I help companies find the right people for their jobs and everything. So um, while they're talking, I always keep an eye on the other people because we've, I've seen people uh, just immediately after these pizza parties just connect. Mm -hmm. And the, fir the first time I saw it uh, was one of my first weeks here. And I saw a gentleman go from being a brand new dig member to being to sitting on the board and being a kind of a financial advisor for a 501c3 that's in dig every day. There you go. And they are um, they're doing wonderful, wonderful work in Africa. And they, he was the final piece they needed to really put the projects forward. So you just never know. Who's you never know. Here it's, or it's what a, connection a, is what? It's an amazing space. Yes. I love it. Um, but a lot of people say, you know, a lot of people ask, the first thing is like, what, why, what do you call, why do you call it dig? Yeah, why do you call it dig? That so, was my next question. Yeah, it's like you're in my mind. Yeah, well, I mean, can you dig it? Uh, can you dig it? <laughs> can uh, you dig it? So dig is an acronym. It yeah. stands for Design Innovation Garage. And the room, if you, uh, if you ever visit, uh, is a large, large room yeah. that used to be the garage for the Trico building. Yeah. And the Trico building is where they invented and distributed wipe, windshield wiper blades. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, we kind of maintain the garage vibe. It's kind of, it's, I wouldn't say it's dirty. No, it's not at all. It's, it's, a very, it's the cleanest it's garage It's immaculate in, Buffalo, in there. Yeah. Um, but it is an uh, industrial vibe, you know, yeah. and we have, we kept the garage door. And on nice days, we open the garage door. I love when you open that door. It's Just like <laughs> it's, it's some customer <laughs> feedback. I love when that door is open. It's so nice up there. With you should breeze. see how the, everybody seating, seated in the room moves entirely across yeah. the room towards the door. Yeah, it's, it's a mad rush to get, get here early when that door is <laughs> open. Um, but, uh, you know, so we maintain the kind of the garage vibe. And, uh, and when you come to dig and you say, hey, Sean, I really need help. Um, you know, we uh, we're ready to you know we're getting ready for tax season, and we don't we don't know what to do to prepare for taxes. We're a five hundred one c three. We're new. I don't know what to do. So typically, what we do is reach out to one of our partners, whether it's a community partner or somebody right in dig. And when that person comes in to meet with you, consult you, uh, it's it's always free. The that person then becomes your mechanic. Nice. So you get it. I get it. Yeah. Okay. This is great. <laughs> I love it. Uh, but yeah, so th so dig is design innovation garage. Uh, it's a wonderful place. It's twenty four seven, um, and uh, and you know we we just encourage uh, anybody that has a great idea that doesn't know what the next step is to to come in and uh, to get in touch. And when we, when we wrap up the episode, we'll talk about how you can how you can become a dig member. But I want to pivot a little bit because last year you guys kind of pivoted yourselves and you did some international business traveling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the great so, country of China. So, uh, flashback to when I was touring, I have been to every continental state. Yeah, I've been to every A market, B market city, yep. um, and I could probably tell you a great bar to go to, a great restaurant, yep. and a great music venue in almost every major city in the states. Yep. However, I've never left North America. Yeah. So when I found out this year that I was going to China, <laughs> um, I immediately asked my sister to go with me because yeah. I. I don't know what I was getting in, getting myself into. Um, and we went to Beijing for five days. Um, but it wasn't all fun and games. You went there for, uh, for, for business BNMC related purposes. Yeah, you what know, were it, you was, to do? it was a really wonderful trip. Not only did I get to go with Colleen, who is a, you know, a very well-versed traveler, yeah. um, but, uh, but we did get to go visit uh, Top, Coder, um, Top Coder's Beijing regional tournament. For those who don't know what Top Coder is, real 15-second synopsis. Yeah, so Top Coder is, uh, is, is the global network of the world's best computer science, you know, like computer scientists, coders, designers, um, programmers, uh, computer architects, all in, one, um, all in one kind of online community mm -hmm. so that when uh, clients of Top Coder say, Let's say um, on their website, the, the big example is GE. Mm -hmm. When GE needs a, um, a problem solved at their company, they rely on these uh, the best in the world through Topcoder. 
And what Top Coder does is take the problem that GE has and crowdsources answers from their network. Mm-hmm. Which is funny because you think GE of all companies, you know, yeah. what I mean, would have those in house, but they don't. You yeah, know. and uh, and I guess and you know the the when you rely on Top Coder, you, you you expect the best in the world. Yeah, you expect a quick response, um, and uh, and and the, the, the optimum answer to your question. So, I went to China to visit this uh, the regional Beijing tournament now. The, there are a number of regional tournaments all over the world. The dates just happened to work out that I had to go to China. Um, but then right before our event, Buffalo, I went to Pittsburgh for that okay. regional tournament. But uh, they, they do a global search. And yeah. every year they invite um, 100 of the best coders, designers, you know, in the world. Uh, and they choose a city to host it. And for the first time um, ever, uh, they chose Buffalo. Wow. And we had to really sell what we had here. Um, you know, the, uh, the Jacobs Institute, the, the supercomputer, the medical campus in general, um, the, the growing economy in Buffalo, um, and our commitment to tech in the future. So what better way to prove your commitment to tech than to host the best and brightest uh, and, and biggest tournament in the world? Yeah. And uh, it was a great week. I mean, it was it was, it was you know, I went to the, the keynote sessions. I mean, it was the, the finals here. I mean, it was it was really remarkable. It was, you know, combination, you know, esports and in coding. It was really cool. It, yeah. was, it was fascinating. The production you guys did up there in Dig. We turned it into Club Dig. Yeah, it was seriously was. It was <laughs> I never seen like you gutted the place, which, you know, much to the chagrin of the, uh, you know, the customers of Dig. But, you know, they were happy, I'm sure, at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, um, I've, a lot of the people in Dig uh not only did they volunteer to help us with the event, mm-hmm. but they were also, they were, they were, they were, imp- I wouldn't say, I, I, I don't want to say impressed, but they were excited that yeah. we were moving in that direction um, because they themselves are typically what you find in Dig as a coder, yeah. you know, or somebody working um, on a building website or building an app. Uh, so it was exciting for them and, and, and for these, the best in the world to be coming in, into their space. I saw a lot of Dig members, um, you know, reach out and get to know other top coder. I'm sorry, get to know top coder designers, and I've seen friendships bloom out of that. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I've seen Dig members get involved with top coder, so it's really great. Um, but we did, we did pull it off. We they chose Buffalo. We had a about a three week production period wow. where we were building stages, hanging lights. It wasn't it wasn't a flip of a switch. No, sure. it was not. And in fact. <laughs> Um, you know, one downfall of the Innovation Center is the distance to the bathroom from yeah. our wing, yep. you know, where Dig and 43 North are. It's a good little workout. It's a, Yeah, it's, it's a considerable little walk. But when you're, size, when you're in the middle of a coding competition, yeah. it, you can't afford that time. No. So the cool part about hosting Top Coder was the placemaking aspect. Yeah. So the other thing we didn't have was a cafeteria. Yeah. So we've got 100 and whatever people that are going to have to eat all at the same time. Where are we going to do this? So fortunately, we have a ancient back alley <laughs> that, and the weather cooperated. So we yes. did. We got uh, very, very nice uh, bathroom trailers to come in, and we decorated the alley so that you didn't even feel like you're outside. Oh, good. And it worked out brilliantly. Um, the other th- for the cafeteria, we have undeveloped space on the uh, third floor, mm-hmm. and we were able to turn that into like a. Jo- it was Joe's Deli that catered the entire week. Okay. It was amazing. It was fantastic. <laughs> um, so we were able to turn that into like Joe's Deli Cafeteria. Yeah. Uh, and Top Coder helped us with that. And what we did was we had a we had a total of 29 countries travel to Buffalo for this tournament. And we were able to get all 29 flags to hang awesome. around the dining room. Uh, so it really did look amazing, it's and, like and that's like village, yeah. it's like the the perfect vantage vantage point to view the campus too. Yeah. So oh, you can great see there, yeah. you can see at the time you know the the Jacobs um, School of Medicine mm-hmm. was just being uh, it's, it, you know Finished, it's, it was yeah. totally up and they were putting the final touches on it. Children's Hospital they were just wrapping up, so uh, it was really really amazing to um, to host that eclectic of a group of people all in the same vantage point on the campus. So it was really cool to see. And it seemed like, you know, based on kind of outsider looking in, like it was a huge success for you guys, right? It was. It was, uh, you know, there was uh, tons of press we were able to get um, for the closing ceremony. 
we uh, we were able to get both the lieutenant governor and the mayor to come and talk mm-hmm. about technology and the future of tech in Buffalo. But to me, the coolest part were the ancillary events. So around the main event, we did um, we did a innovation summit, mm-hmm. which was fantastic. It was awesome. Yeah. And we will be doing more of those. Good. Uh, we also were able to get two of the best coders in the world to go visit um, Mayor Byron Brown's coding program in the public mm-hmm. schools here in Buffalo and to talk about uh, what coding means to them, how it's changed their lives, and how uh, coding and building apps has led them to um, new businesses and uh, you know tournaments in Buffalo yeah. and traveling the world. Uh, and basically encourage them to encourage kids who are already, already in this program to, that they're on the right track and that they're, you know, this is the pilot program of a coding program in the city of Buffalo. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and the kids were blown away. Good. The most important part to me, though, was, um, was top coder assigned 12 of the best coders in the world to work with M&T Bank to develop an app for... Uh, man, I can't remember the name of the school right now. I'm sorry. Uh, I can't remember. But anyways, there's a there's a uh, there's a school in Buffalo on Delaware Avenue, and the coders help them to develop an app so that after school, the kids can stay in touch with their mentors okay. and find mentors, and it's basically like a matchmaking app for mentorship mm-hmm. during it's after elementary school and young um you know young education so it was coding with a purpose it was it was a um and the kids came in and said yeah. this, this is what, what we, we like want, this yeah. is what we don't like they they would Do tear apart your app you know <laughs> like um and they were work on android it was it was amazing and then the kids when the kids came out of that room after that session yeah. um and i can give you the video it's an awesome video um they were they were talking about becoming developers. Good. They're talking about um, getting into uh, coding and learning, um, learning the different coding programs uh, and languages. Uh, and, and it basically was just, it was like, I, I am a wimp. Yep. And I teared up because yeah, yeah. you could just see how much of an impact this had on those kids. Yeah. Uh, so for that to work out and for us to get a partner like M&T Bank um, to help us with that, mm-hmm. Uh, here in Buffalo, it was a um, it was a beautiful beautiful part of the the entire top coder visit. So that was my that was my favorite part. So I think it's safe to say we can expect more events similar to top coder, maybe even top coder coming back. I will I will say that top coder before we were even done with the event, they did ask if they could come back to Buffalo. That's fantastic. Yeah. So I mean, so obviously you've left a good impression with them. I think that we went. Ab- I think that we went above and beyond. I okay. think that we were just a we were a host, you yeah. know. And instead of them doing it, doing this event in a uh, in a hotel yeah. in Austin, Conference room, yeah. uh, w- they had a team. They had a facilities team to help custom the room and the and the campus. It was. Um, I think that they just got they got more attention and more attention to detail mm-hmm. than they ever have before. Uh, and I worked with this wonderful woman named Jessie. Uh, on the top coder team, and her and I, we talked three times a day for six months, and and it paid off. Yeah, the event went. There was no not one hiccup. It's always good to. It was, it was good like when that goes I uh, pitch. I felt like at the end of it, I felt like perhaps my sister should have planned that event because <laughs> it went so well. Um, but looking back on it, it's it was the type of event for me that was also educational mm-hmm. for me to get to know because I'm not a I'm not a tech kind of guy you know I, I like i but i think with your tour managing background you know how to get people together you know how to yeah. wheel and deal and like yeah, you know that. how to make things work i mean that's not easy in itself so i mean it's really just a carry over yeah what you were doing years ago it was funny it was like uh we were on a phone call and, and she was we were talking about the setup and dig and how we're going to set yeah. up the arena she was like we need staging we need microphones we need lights and i was just like i got the guy, <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy. here in I buffalo know yeah so it was cool. It was like, uh, you know, all parts of my life got tied together into this. My friends who helped me with lighting and, and staging and everything. And it just came together so well. Um, but, um, but yes, it's safe to say that we will be moving forward with, um, even if it's a small hackathon, 
Uh, there's really cool ideas yeah. that we're throwing. Just keeping right that momentum now. going. Is exactly. Important. Yeah, that's that was the number one discussion about how do we start 2018. It's um, how do we follow up with Top Coder and how do we not let it kind of fizzle out? You yeah. know. Um, so with that, we actually hired a CIO, Chief Innovation Officer, um, who was the guy that introduced us to Top Coder. There you go. His name's Sam Marazzo. He is a um, he is a a brainiac, tech committed, uh, community guy. And he Future is your guest of the latitude podcast. I'm sure. Actually, I was hoping he would be here with me today, <laughs> but, um, uh, but yeah, I, I think, um, he's going to be the, you know, the spark at the BNMC yeah. that really takes us into the future and, um, and brings our commitment to tech to the, to the whole next level. So last question, because uh, we're, we're running, uh, you're on the longer side. You're almost talked longer than Jordan Levy, which is <laughs> shocking to me. <laughs> No disrespect how am I to Jordy. Doing? You're doing okay, okay in my book. We'll see how the ratings come in, though. <laughs> but last question, ha- possibly the hardest. I get to tell a joke at the end, though, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, favorite Seinfeld episode? Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anyone who knows Sean, he's probably the most diehard Seinfeld fan in Buffalo. Yeah, definitely. Um, in fact, little, uh, we did just host the, the Soup Nazi, Larry Thomas, yeah. in Buffalo for the fourth annual uh, Festivus party that we do at Hydraulic Hearth. Nice. And, um, man, that's a tough question. Yeah, see, in, you weren't expecting it. No. Uh, I think that my favorite is the Jean-Paul Jean-Paul episode okay. where he travels to New York to run the New York City Marathon and Kramer gets the hot tub. And <laughs> and uh, and I think that's just that's the most laughs for me. It's an yeah. absurd episode. It's a really good one. Um, uh, but you know what? After getting to know the Soup Nazi, yeah, I really, like, I really do think that that's one of the best episodes, yeah. the Soup Nazi, and that's you know that's anybody's answer. Yeah, but um, but you know what? I got getting to know the guy comes to Buffalo in the middle of the winter yeah. from San or from San Francisco, uh, and just puts his heart and soul into this event with me. Um, it it like I got a whole new respect for this guy, and he's not uh, by any means a Nazi. An entrepreneur himself too. He is. He is. So um, those are my answers. Uh. I'll give you joke time in a minute, but for those who want to learn more about Dig, possibly become members at Dig and find their last square inch before ACV takes it up, how do they do it? The best way to get involved with Dig is to uh, is to reach out to me directly. But the best way to do that uh, is to go to innovation innovationcenterbuffalo.org, um, and uh, and that's their direct route to all things entrepreneurial here at the Innovation Center on the Buffalo Niagara Medical Campus. All right, and you and I certainly appreciate dad jokes, so I will. <laughs> what are you going to send us out with? You can't do it on the fly. Come on, you've had forty minutes to talk. I know, I, I know. Think okay, about um, all right. Uh, well, it he's kinda... sweating. He's sweating. He's <laughs> nervous. He doesn't know. I can't think of a good one right now. You're losing the audience. No, it was crazy. I was, um, I was watching the news last night, and you know, started to hear about Steve Harvey. Did you hear about this? I do not know. He's got that domestic abuse charge right now. It's a real family feud. Oh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Wasn't sure where that was going. All right. Sean, thank you so much for joining right, us on the podcast. Thanks, everybody. And uh, make sure you check out Dig. We'd love to have you. Cheers. <laughs>